Hello YouTube, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about grid tied battery storage systems, particularly AC coupled grid tied battery storage systems. Now, the idea of a battery storage system is obviously to supply the loads in your house with energy from the battery. But if you're still connected to the grid, how does that work? So here's your typical setup. You have your battery storage inverter connected to a big stack of batteries. It's also connected to the AC supply in your home. Now an AC coupled battery storage system will almost certainly have one or more of these. This is a CT clamp or a current transformer. Now exactly how these work is beyond the scope of this video but they rely on the electromagnetic effect and with this clamped around one of the incoming tails to your house it's possible to tell how much power is going through the wire and more importantly in which direction it's traveling in or out. As I mentioned the inverter will also have a connection to a CT clamp that will be clipped around your incoming electricity supply. Using this it can tell how much power is going into or out of your house. So let's suppose you've got a rapid boil kettle. It takes 3000 watts. You switch it on and straight away 3000 watts comes rushing in from the grid to start boiling the water. The battery inverter will take a look at its CT clamp and notice that there's 3000 watts coming in. So it will try to cancel that out by taking power from the batteries and pushing out 3000 watts itself the current will take the shortest path to be consumed. So the kettle will start using the current coming from the battery inverter rather than that coming from the grid. The next time the battery inverter takes a look at its CT clamp, it now sees that there's nothing coming in from the grid. Perfect, you're not using any grid power. So now the kettle has finished boiling the water. It's not consuming that 3000 watts anymore, so the only place left for it to go is out onto the grid. The battery inverter takes a look at its CT clamp and sees that you're exporting 3000 watts. It knows that it's generating that much and so it just stops. The next time it looks at its CT clamp it sees that power is zero. Great, everything says it should be. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it works for discharging to supply the loads in your home. But how does it work for charging? particularly if you've got solar. The sun comes out and your grid tied solar inverter starts pulling power from the panels and generating AC which goes out onto the grid. Your battery inverter takes a look at its CT clamp and sees that you're exporting 1000 watts. It knows that it needs to charge the batteries so it takes 1000 watts of AC, converts it to DC and charges the batteries. The next time it looks at the CT clamp, it sees that there's nothing going out. Fantastic, it's using all available spare power to charge the batteries. Now let's say a cloud passes in front of the sun. Your grid tied inverter is now only able to pull 200 watts from the panels instead of 1000 watts. The battery inverter is still charging with 1000 watts, but only 200 watts is coming from your grid tied inverter. The rest will rush in from the grid to make up the difference. When your battery inverter next looks at its CT clamp, it'll see that it's pulling in 800 watts. It knows that it's charging the batteries with 1000 watts, so if it reduces down to just 200 watts, that should cancel out. And the next time it looks at the CT clamp, it sees that it's neither importing nor exporting power. Fantastic. When the cloud finally moves away, your solar inverter is able to start pulling a thousand watts from the panels. Because your battery inverter is only using 200 watts, the remaining 800 flows out onto the grid. The battery inverter will look at the CT clamp and see that there's 800 watts going spare. It knows that it still needs to charge the batteries, so it increases the charge rate 
from 200 watts to 1000 watts and that consumes all the power coming from the solar inverter. The next time it looks at the CT clamp it sees that there's nothing being exported. Amazing! OK, so that's basically how they work. Now, any of you who've watched any of my monthly stats videos may have heard me talking about how I can't get my self-usage above about 95% because I'm always pulling a small amount of energy from the grid, even though I'm technically fully running off batteries. So why is that? Well, let's go into detail about exactly why you get this small amount of bleed of energy from the grid into your home, but also from your home out onto the grid. Let's assume that the battery inverter takes a reading from the CT clamp every second. It's actually faster than this, but for the sake of this uh, example, let's say it's every second. And let's say that it also takes one tenth of a second for it to react to that reading, whether that be to push out more power or to take in power. The battery inverter takes a reading from the CT clamp and sees that there's nothing coming in or out. One tenth of a second later you switch on the kettle to boil. 3000 watts rushes in from the grid to start boiling the water. Nine tenths of a second later the battery inverter takes another reading from the CT clamp and sees that there's now 3000 watts coming in. It takes a tenth of a second to react and starts pushing out 3000 watts. But for one whole second you were pulling in 3000 watts from the grid. That's 0.8 watt hours. Now let's have a look what happens when we add solar into the mix. The sun is out and the solar inverter is generating a thousand watts all of which is being consumed by the battery inverter to charge the battery. When it looks at the CT clamp there's a reading of zero. One tenth of a second later a cloud comes in front of the sun and the output drops to just 200 watts. So 800 watts rushes in from the grid to make up the difference of the 1000 watts that the battery inverter is currently pulling. Nine tenths of a second later the battery inverter checks the CT clamp again and sees that there's 800 watts being consumed from the grid. It takes one tenth of a second to react and drops the charge rate to 200 watts but for one whole second you were pulling in 800 watts from the grid. That's 0.2 watt hours. Yeah. Now 0.8 of a watt hour might not seem like very much and this is an exaggerated example. But this kind of delayed reaction is happening constantly throughout the whole day and over 24 hours it can add up to a significant amount. In my experience with my system it seems to be approximately a kilowatt hour per day. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found that interesting. Please do share this with anyone who might be interested in how um, AC coupled battery storage systems work. Uh, please leave any comments in the comment section below. Um, please like the video and uh, do subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.